right. Well, we're waiting on folks to come on in. I'll go ahead and throw this up on the screen. On a scale of cheeseburger, how you feeling today? Something for the chat there. On a scale of cheese, I don't know. Have you ever rated yourself on a scale of cheeseburger before? Something new. Give us some challenges out there and figure out on a scale of cheeseburger where you're at. I'm probably at a number two with you guys. I see number twos popping in here. I don't know that I'm a loaded cheeseburger at this point. I mean, I feel like I got a load of stuff to get done today, but uh, I don't feel like a loaded cheeseburger. I'm probably not number one. Number two, boy, that's a meaty, meaty cheeseburger right there. That uh, that is uh, that's a lot of beef. It's threes. Don't see any fours in here right now. That that's a pretty nasty looking burger. I don't know. I don't know if I even want to eat number four. I'll eat these other three, but uh, mm, that number four, that's seen its better days. So, all right. Well, good to see everybody sitting at about a two burger, a few three burgers. Three burger ain't bad. That's right. You got it going on. All right. Well, let me go ahead and move into our curriculum because this won't take very long today. Move over here to the student view. All right. So this is third hour. Let's go check it out. Let's look at our grade screen as usual. And it shows all we have is a test this week. Look at that. We've got all the assignments done for module five. So this week we have the exponential and logarithmic functions test parts one and two. So let's go back to the activity screen. We can take a look at those. Uh, there is a, uh, a little practice test thing, but it's not really a test. It basically helps you review. If you're missing notes from any of these, remember you can use your notes on the test guys. You click on this this gives you the uh, lesson summaries there it is lesson summary from 5.01 so has the formulas that you used for compound interest and continuous interest and uh, talks about exponential exponential growth exponential decay how to solve there's the steps right there there's the steps so this is a great place if you missing some notes to get some more notes or to print these out and use these as your notes. You can print them. But it's all about solving exponentials and solving logarithmic equations. Let's, let's look at the test while we're here. Here's part one. Part one. Congratulations, you've completed the module. Be prepared. So it just kind of gives you a little, give it 100% attention and effort. Just some good advice there. There's two parts. Part one, part two, we know that. So let's look at it. It says it takes about 40 minutes, if you know what you're doing. Start. All right, so the first part is multiple choice, uh, which the following is a solution. They gave you an equation up here. you got to solve it and figure out which one of those Zs solves it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many questions we got. Doesn't look like many. Ten. Ten questions on part one. And there were six points each, so 60 points for part one. All right. Yes, I'm sure I want to leave. I know I haven't turned in any answers. Let's go to part two. Part two has one, two, three, four questions. Four questions. Uh, see, Larry wants to deposit 350 bucks with an interest of 4% compounded quarterly. Peggy wants to do it at a six pound, 6% 6 compounded monthly which is going to have more money after two years. Show your work. So basically you should calculate Larry's choice and Peggy's choice or whatever your problem. You may not have these exact problems. Let's see. Wendell's looking over some data. Uh, it's represented by this exponential function. How can you convert that to a log function when the strength is eight? All right. X is the strength. So how would you change that to a log function? Mike is working on solving this exponential equation. He doesn't know where to start, so you need to solve the equation. It says use, use completing sentences to describe the steps. 
in math, a complete sentence is 37 to the X equals 12. So I'm fine with using words and not using words. If you don't use the words, you better show every step. And it has a hint, use the change of base formula, right? So I'll give you another hint. Rewrite that as a logarithm. Don't take the log of both sides. That's not using the change of base formula. Do not take the log of both sides. You may see some of them college kids do that. We haven't studied that. We're not doing that. We are simply converting it to a logarithm in one step, then using the change of base. And then the last one should be somewhat simple. Okay, so it gives you two different graphs, tells you what the graphs represent, and it wants you to find the solution to the two functions and what does the solution mean. So you got to read this paragraph, see what the situation is, and answer it based on looking at the graph. Give the answer and say what the answer represents, right? Uh, it represents how many cheeseburgers they ate every hour. Now, that's not it because this doesn't talk about cheeseburgers. But I'm just giving an example. All right, so that is our two parts of our test this week. No lessons on test week. We're just simply testing to see what do we know, what did we learn this semester up to this point. Right. So let me let me say this about part two, because people will jump in and do part one and then they want to skip part two. Or they go back and do part two two weeks from now when you know waiting until you've forgotten everything. Don't wait till you forget everything. Do part two after you do part one, because part one is going to get you thinking about exponentials and logarithms. And here's the thing on that part two. I've got all those big boxes. That's because you're supposed to show all of your work. That's a good thing. Because on part one, it's worth six points, right? You get it right, you get six points. You don't get it right, you get zero points for every question. Part two, they're worth 10 points. There's only four of them. But if you get it right, I see how you did it, see how you worked, you get, you get 10 points. If you get it wrong, well, if you showed me what you were doing, you won't get zero points. That's better than part one, where it's all or nothing. You got it right, you got it wrong. Part two, if you get it wrong, I can look and see, okay, what, what were you using? Uh, did you convert it to a log? Yeah, you did that correctly. Uh, change of base. Uh, oh, you just made a calculation error. You said four times eight was 54. Okay, so you were doing it correctly. I can see you used the right steps. You were doing things. You just made a, a small math error. All right, I'll give you a nine out of 10. Or if you made a bigger error, eight out of 10, you know. Or, okay, it looks like you got totally lost, but you started out okay. You you started out doing this, and then you, you I, I can give you four or five points maybe. You know, just depending on how well you were doing, what did you say correctly? You know, very, even if you worked through the problem and they're like, okay, this is entirely wrong. They weren't even started. I'll still give you a couple of points just for attempting it and showing me what you were trying to do. So that is a better question than all or nothing multiple choice because you can get partial credit. So it's important that you show the work. If we get to those and you're just like, Answer is X equals two. Well, if it's not X equals two, I can't give you any points because you didn't show me any work on how you came up with X equals two. You just threw an answer out there. So you made it a multiple choice question where it's zero points or 10 points. So don't do that. If you go to put an answer in there, show me something on how you got that answer. How did you get X equals two? So if X doesn't equal two, I can say, okay, well, some of this, you were in the right path, but you, you you got off. But I can give you something besides zero. So that's why you show your work on there, because something is better than getting zero. If you miss all four of them, you don't want to get a zero on part two. If you miss all four of them, maybe you can get partial credit. Maybe you can get 25 out of 40. Maybe you got uh, some points, half the points, more than half the points on these questions. You didn't get a 40 because you didn't get any of them right. You know, but... If you got something right on each of them, you can still pass part two without getting anything right because I will give you partial credit. So I just wanted to emphasize that uh, because people seem to freak out on part two and just give me an answer or just skip questions. And that just hurts your grade so badly. Do something. Figure something out. Remember, you can use all the notes. Anything you have from this 
any examples you have, any of that, you know, pull that out. Have that next to you. Go back and look at these chapters if you don't have notes. Go back and look at these chapters. Say, how do you do that kind of problem? Okay. So show me some work. Show me some, show me your thinking. All right, guys. Um, this is an A day Friday. So we'll have class Friday for anyone who grade is below 70%. And I just updated hack with everything up to these first five assignments that we had. Uh, so some of you guys are missing a few things. And so your grades low, get those turned in. I would go back and do missing assignments before I took the test because I need to know how to do these things. And if I didn't turn in assignments, I probably didn't practice that. I didn't even try to do those type of problems. So I don't want to try it for the first time on the test. That shouldn't be the first time you try some of these problems. You need to go back to those, do the missing assignments if you have any. But otherwise, uh, Wednesday, we will not have class. I will not be here. It's the state bowling tournament. I got to get on a bus tomorrow and go with my bowling team for four hours and spend the night in Cabot and spend all day Cabot. All day Wednesday at Cabot at the, at the bowling alley and I get home about 10 or 11 at night. I don't know. So no class on Wednesday. I'll send out an email reminder for you guys. But otherwise, I don't have anything else for you. It's test week. I'm not throwing anything new at you to learn this week. Just want you to show me what you've learned in the last month. And again, do your missing assignments, then take the test. Any questions? All right. If not, I will catch you guys next time. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.